It's the album that changed everything, Metallica's Black Album. In cause and effect Metallica, author Chris Aiken takes you back to the lead up, the release, and the shockwaves that followed. Relive the moment that divided fans, reshaped heavy metal, and turned commercial radio on its ear. With insider stories and personal memories from rock critic and radio personality Chris Aiken, this book is a backstage pass to one of rock's most iconic moments. Get your copy now at chrisaiken.net or on Amazon. Don't miss out on this epic journey through heavy metal history. What's up, everybody? It's John Bush from the Mighty Armored Saint, and you are watching CMS TV. Crank it! presents and i of course am chris aiken and today on the show we get another legend it's always good to talk to the legends uh you certainly know him from armored saint you certainly remember him from anthrax uh maybe now you know him from category seven i don't know he's everywhere he's been everywhere for 30 plus he's out on tour going out on tour with wasp beginning the end of october he is the one the only john bush john how are you man the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Hi, Chris. How are you? I'm good, man. It's good to was, talk to you. That was a nice intro. Thank you very much. Sure. Well, dude, I, I am a humongous fan. Uh, you know, I, I love what you do, no matter what you do. You know, it's I don't care what band it is. Throw me Metal Allegiance, I'm buying it. Throw me Category Seven, I'm there. You're you're an easy buy, man. You're you're for a lot of fans. It ain't, isn't just me, and I'm sure you probably heard this. You're one of those what we call phone book guys that open the phone book start singing the names and people will listen that's funny maybe i should try to do that i i had a slight um snafu on the song i was working on right now so maybe i should just go to the phone book and see what i can um come up with that's a good idea good recommendation <laughs> right i guarantee people would listen man no doubt <laughs> i mean you know you could probably make it rhyme somehow some way and you could come up with something creative there it'd be kind of inventive <laughs> a bonus track for one of your future records right i like there you it go. i like it i like it <laughs> Nice. Well, dude, let's get to the matter at hand, which is obviously you're going back out on tour with Wasp. Um, you know, you did you did this, was it last year or earlier this year, but it was successful. Now you're doing it again. So talk yeah. about it. Uh, well, it was actually, I think, two years ago now, because oh, wow. I think it was right around the same time, uh, same months. Uh, it was in 22. Feels like it wasn't that long ago, but it was. Um yeah, it's yeah, it's great. It's kind of uh, you know, everything kind of worked out the way I guess it was supposed to because originally after we did that first leg, we were supposed to do a second leg and um and tickets actually were on sale for that second leg and then Blackie I think got the uh uh the consensus from his his doctors that you know, maybe going out that was a little premature based on his his back circumstances. So he was it was more important to kind of solve that for him. So 
it was a kind of first postponed and then it actually got completely canceled uh, which was of course disappointing because the first leg was so great and then eventually we went out on the road with Queensryche and then he was ready so then they booked another tour and we were unable to do it and then Death Angel was on it and this group on two others and um and then they um you know they booked the shows and they were selling tickets and 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 then everything kind of I guess didn't work out with those other bands and then Armored Saints name was brought back to him and um and he said yeah let's do it and uh, we were happy because you know like I said we were meant to we were supposed to do it in the first place. So it kind of all worked out with synergy, if you will. So right. is, it, is that the right crowd for you guys? I mean, I, I imagine yes, if you're doing it again, but. Oh um, yeah, it's a great crowd for us. Um, you know, Wasp and Armour Saint actually started together in the eighties in Los Angeles, played many shows in clubs like the Troubadour and the Country Club and had great shows back in 1983. So uh, the, like I said, the first leg was really awesome. Um, and you know we were excited about doing the second leg. And the cr the cool thing about this this particular leg is we are going to return to some places that we that we've been to in the Midwest and the East Coast. But there's places like the first two to three weeks of the tour are places that we either haven't played in years or never played. So uh, like we've never played Spokane, Calgary, uh, uh, Boise. Uh, we haven't played Vancouver since the '80s, Quebec City, uh, uh, Cal. Um, you know, uh, Spokane, you know, Salt Lake City. There's all these places that we just haven't played. Yeah, once we get in the Midwest, Cleveland, Pittsburgh, of course, we played with not only Queensryche and Wasp, but sure. together. But um, yeah, we're excited. It's going to be a fun tour, and, and Black and treated us like gold last time. So we're expecting nothing less. Right on, definitely. Now, I'm let me ask uh, Gardner out here. Of course, I try to find the right time, but. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's all, please, I apologize. It's all good, man. Well, dude, on the on the last run that you guys did, if I if and again, I'm basing this on memory. I probably should have researched better, but you had a couple of shows where you were sick, and McMaster stepped in for you, if I remember correctly. How weird was that for you to kind of be standing on the sideline and watching Armored Saint without the Saint of Armored yeah. Saint? I mean, it was, it was weird. It was surreal and, uh, you know, uh, humbling. And, um, you know, I was extremely stoked that Jason was able to come to my rescue and he's a great guy, awesome yeah. singer, cool performer. He's just awesome. You know, I love Jason. We, we go back to 1985 when we met at the, the cameo theater in San Antonio, Texas on the Metallica. Well, it was actually, at that point, it only it was Metallica and Armored Saint, but it was the Metallica Wasp Armored Saint tour as a whole. Right. So, uh, here, let me step aside here a little bit because this guy's <laughs> noisy. Um, and I'm walking around my house, and that's a little candid here. But uh, <laughs> yeah, in any case, it was um, you know, it was uh, a, it was it was great for Jason to do that for me. Really hooked, like I said, he he prevented us from having to cancel some shows, right. and. Um, you know, and because at this point in, in our career, you know, missing out on a couple of shows is it could be really costly. Well, any band at that for that matter. But yeah, you know, I, it was weird. Like I said, it was humbling. Um, you know, I'm watching Armored Saint. I, as a matter of fact, when we played the show in Jersey, I think it's Westmont, Jersey, basically outside the city of New York. And Frankie Bello came to the gig, and I'm standing there at the soundboard with Frankie Bello and. He, you know, he'll take any opportunity he can to bust my balls on anything. <laughs> and there he is looking at me, laughing, pointing to them, going, this band is pretty good. And it was, <laughs> it was great. It was, it was funny. You know, those are kind of things that you, it keeps you in check as a person. So it was right all <laughs> very cool, man. Now, John, obviously, man, since I guess since COVID really, the cost of everything required to tour has tripled. You know, from hotels to gas to buses to, right. you know, flights, whatever yeah. it is, it has all tripled. How has that changed what you guys as Armored Saint do? Has it changed anything or do you just kind of accept making a third of what you used to make? Well, you know, we've actually done pretty well in the last couple tours. So I, I want to make that clear because I don't want to make it seem like it's, uh, it's, it's, it's been well as me kind of thing. We've actually mm -hmm. done pretty well uh for ourselves financially i mean armored saint is arguably bigger than we've ever been in our career except for maybe a stretch in like 1984 and 85 but right. i really believe that we're bigger than we ever were so um you know we, we, we have a pretty 
small amount of people that we travel with. You know, you need a sound man who's just a tour manager. That's my buddy Chris, who kind of resembles you actually. Oh, nice. Um and and then we you know, you need a guitar tech who, who deals with all the guitar guitar players and, and Joey, the bass player, and then the drum tech, of course, deals with Gonzo. And then you have somebody who sells merch because that's really important. And um and that's it. You know, it's just us, you know, nine people on the road. Um, everybody gets along pretty well. Uh, we're going to incorporate a couple new crew people on this tour, which is, you know, a, a will be a slight adjustment. But, um, you know, the band is, you know, we're veterans at this point, and we all kind of find our own solitude and ways to make, you know, make ourselves uh, not, you know, want to strangle one another. But, you know, uh, it, I think we, we do pretty well with that. And, um, you know, we we kind of stay within the budget of what we are. You know, we, we have a couple nice aspects to the stage, a cool backdrop, uh, you know, of, of, you know, we, we don't have all the, the pyro and, uh, right. you know, the nights fighting as, <laughs> but, you know, we, we just try to keep our budgets pretty minimal and, um, you know, we get it, you know, COVID did ruin a lot of things for a lot of companies, buses in particular and right. crew people cause they couldn't tour as well. But, um, you know, everybody's trying to pick up the pieces from that and, and move forward so right are, are you finding that there's less people at shows or more now or are people just rabid for it well um i think that it depends on the shows of course but um i think that people were very excited right away after covid to get back out there and see bands um and then what happened i in my opinion is that it, it became extremely competitive because it, nobody could tour for about a year and a half or so sure. so everybody went out and then it became very competitive and you know money can only go stress so far so yeah you know, i think that it's um you know it's a competitive market out there so you want to have a great show that people want to come see a great package um i think that's really imperative and um you know i think people are probably picking and choosing things they want to go to uh, quite frankly, because that's what I do as a consumer. Sure. I'm a fan myself. So, um, but you know, we hope that in the fall and the winter, people want to get out a little more because you don't want to be too locked in and right. when you're in cold uh, territories where it, you know you can get a little cabin fever. So, um, we're hoping this tour is going to bring back a, a lot of people. And like I said, even though we are going to some returning cities that we played together, we're also going to a lot of new places. So, I'm excited. Absolutely. It, it, it seems like for you, it's, you know, these next six months are going to be exciting and doing new things. Obviously, right after this tour, you have the holidays, but then you're coming right back with Category 7 for the first first tour with Category 7. Talk a little bit about how that came together and how how that band is doing overall, how it's been received and how how you feel it's doing. Well, it was extremely well received. I mean, James Hetfield gave it a a, a, a big endorsement, which was really cool and very sure. nice of him. So, um, you know, and he's the king, quite frankly. So, um, yeah, it, it was it was a really cool project because it did kind of develop in a way where it just was really organic. I I know that word's overused, and I overuse it, but um, it really was something that just kind of happened. Of like, hey, you want to write some songs together? And then we wrote a couple songs together and the next thing you know we wrote a few more and the next thing you know you had like nine songs and you're like well you might as well make a record and put right. it out. and then once you put it out and people are digging it you might as well do some shows so uh it kind of to me it's it's like little baby steps and that's the way i looked at it um you know we're going to do this like two week run in the midwest and east coast and um i'm excited and and, and curious to see how we do and um, it's it's going to be fun. I think people do want to see it because people they really dig the material, um, and the guys are amazing players. So we we have to figure out a way to stretch the set out a little bit because we only have the one record. Right. So we'll be we'll be kind of challenged with that, and we we'll have to figure it out. It's not till March, so uh, you know, give me a little break after this Wasp tour. So right. I can back out like immediately, and and also learn a bunch of new songs. Uh, I mean, the same tunes, obviously, I got those in, in my DNA, my memory bank. So um, for the most part, every now and then I, I may make a lyrical error. But, um, you know, those songs are, I, I, I think I should have them down at this point. But right. Category 7 songs, I'm going to have to rehearse. So, um, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be cool. <laughs> right on. Let me ask you this on the padding it out. Obviously, there's there's everybody in the band has other bands that they've done or do continue to do for you could this be the place that we hear some of those anthrax songs that have been rumored to 
be its yeah. own set of tour. Well, it could, and there's some talk about that again. Um, so I, I, there's a couple things I have to iron out probably this week uh, with some ideas. Um, yeah, you know, who knows? I, I don't know. Well, it's possible. It's possible <laughs> there might be something else. We'll see. Right on, definitely. For for that band, and, and you know, I, I mentioned it a minute ago about everybody else has, everybody including yourself has other full-time commitments. Does that leave Category 7 as a project, or do you guys envision it as a quote-unquote band or entity that will do material further down the road? Well, I guess it depends on which guy you ask. Uh, you know, if you ask our, the manager, Larry Mazur, he's like, I'm breaking this band, which is cool. His enthusiasm is 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 really off the charts, and that's great. I appreciate that. Um, you know, again, for me, I kind of take everything in small steps. Um, it's just, I don't know, maybe it's the cautionary way I've had to deal with the music industry over the last 40 years where um, – you know, my expectations, I keep them kind of reserved. So I'm not disappointed um, because I have been many times in, the, in my in my career through the years. Um, so I don't get me wrong. I've, I've done some amazing stuff and I'm really proud and, uh, and and totally honored of everything that I've been involved with. But, you know, I just I just kind of just, I take a little steps because to me, that's just the best way to handle it for my own mindset. Um, you know, we, we made one record at like I don't to think about a new record with that band um I'm, I'm not there of course but um at the same time yeah now the gardeners in my coming into my backyard <laughs> nice <laughs> this is a, a spontaneous interview I'm right sorry. it's all good you. um but at the same time um you know i'm also we're still writing some songs for a new say record that we want to put out next year so um I got a lot to do. I've got a lot of songs to work on. I got a lot of lyrics to write. I got to really mix this up a little bit when it right. comes to um, changing bands and mindsets and, uh, you know, uh, lyrics and melodies. And did I use that? Did I repeat that? Is I, you know, I'm, I'm like, wow, I, I got a lot going on here. It's good. It's real challenging. It actually, it, it, it makes you work harder. Sure. You, so you like it that way? You like the chaos a little bit? No, no, not necessarily. <laughs> okay. I'm not saying that, but um, because I probably don't, I probably don't work too well with that. My wife is amazing. She can wear many hats, and Joey is is like her. They they can wear many hats. Um, I'm not so good with that. Uh, so, but it is what it is, and this is this is what we're dealing with. So, um, let's roll with it. Right on. Uh, before before we get ready to wrap this one up, John, I, I did want to go backwards a little bit to um, the single that you guys put out with Saint, the cover, um, One Chain, Don't Make No Prison. Uh, how, I, more than anything, I, it sounds great. It is great. It's an interesting choice, which is always, with you guys, it's always an interesting, you know, there, there's the obvious and then there's the strong left turn, you know, with you guys. What What made you choose that song? Uh, it was an idea that Joey had. He knows that you know we we all were kind of raised uh, as much on on metal as we were on R and B music back in the day. We've always been big fans of of all the artists uh, from the '70s on that that contributed. You know, whether it's Kurtz Mayfield or you know the Four Tops and the OJ's and um, you know Earth, Wind, and Fire. I mean, all these bands that we, we love those bands. We love those bands as much as we love Priest and Sabbath and you know Kiss. So. Um, you know, that music had a real impact on us, even though we don't, we're not an R&B group, sure. but to, to do that, I don't think was a stretch. Um, you know, those are some of my favorite singers of all time. Um, you know, guys like Marvin Gaye, I mean, he's, he's the king, you know, as well. So, um, I put him, him and Hetfield in the same, you know, in the same bo boat there, as far as being credible, uh, singers and influences on my life. So, um, you know, it's, it, it wasn't that kind of stretch, um. It, it was fun. Levi Stubbs was a great singer. I thought he did it the best. Uh, the, did the best version of it. Santana did one. Doobies did one. Uh, but I thought the and a band People, I think, was the first band to actually even do it. But um, I think the the Four Tops one's the best. So we just try to pay homage to their version, and you know, I belted it out and and my best uh, imitation of Levi Stubbs, and I think it came great. And we had the dap dapper suits, and right, looked pretty good. <laughs> Like kind of honoring those uh, old school soul bands, and um, we we're we're gonna try to play it a few times live here on this tour. We got to work on it. Very good, man. And, and last thing, John, and uh, 
it's sort of sad, but we could turn this into something good. Uh, you and I had a very special mutual friend, at least to me, and I know him for you as well, who passed away almost two years ago now, Bob Nalbandian. And yes. and obviously, you know, on my side, I don't ever want his name to be forgotten. I want people to keep watching Inside Metal and, you know, remembering his legacy. Because I, I think, and I'm and I'll ask you your opinion, I think even in passing, he never got the credit for everything he did for metal you know in the earlier stages so maybe give us a good story about bob or your impressions of of bob and his importance to heavy metal in general well there's i could say a few things about bob one he was one of the first people that actually saw us as a band we were playing the woodstock in orange county i think the only people that came was like my parents gonzo and phil's parents um, Joey wasn't even in the band at that time. It was the old bass player that we had named Mike Williams. Um, and there was this dude with like a denim vest and all these patches, tigers and panting and all this stuff. And we we're like, who's that guy? Where, <laughs> why is he here? And uh, it was Bob. And so like, uh, I, I mean, there was probably literally like 12 people there that maybe a few more. And he was one of them. And that was our when our relationship developed. And so I guess he read about it or heard about it, said, saw a picture and said, these guys are cool. I'm going to go check them out. Uh, and then we were friends ever since. Um, he did a bunch of stuff through the years with us. He he worked on the fan club with Farmer Saint at one point, point for us. He obviously had his magazine, The Headbanger, put us on the cover. Um, Bob and I had a club that we did for a while called the black lodge wasn't so successful and we actually butted heads a few times about the direction of it but we did have some fun mostly just hanging out drinking and 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 hanging out at the club um bob came out and sold merchandise one time for us in arizona uh where we had like a major dog pile in the van and you know we, we he was just part of our 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 legacy and our history through the years and you know i was really I, I I knew he was dealing with some health issues, but uh, his death was actually kind of sudden. And um, he's, you know, he was the mad Armenian. That's what we called him. And right. he was, you know, he was, he was a crazy guy that, you know, we, we knew for years and enormous supporter of Armour Sane and, um, you know, he's missed and, and, but his legacy will live on, as you said. Right on. Definitely. Well, well, John, obviously, man, to wrap this up, you guys, uh, Armored Saint, going back on the road with Was, starting on the 28th of this month, I believe. Yeah, and cool. um, where where do we tell people to go, John, to keep up with you guys, buy merch? And I mean buy merch, don't just stream it, buy something, cheap bucks, for God's sakes. But where, hey, you where, said that word. You were I supposed did. to. I'll put the small peep in, <laughs> but where, where do we send them to, to keep up with you guys, man? I mean, you can go to armorsaint.com to obviously check out for where the tickets are. And, uh, you know, there's links there to our, like our store that metal blade does our merch store, which is great. Um, you know, uh, come out and see us. That's the best way to get a t-shirt or come to the show, get a t-shirt, check out saint, check out wasp. Um, and, and, you know, come rock with us. That's the most important thing. Right on. Well, one more time, Armored Saint out on the road with Wasp here for the next couple of months. And John, as always, it's great talking to you here on Chris Hagen Presents. Thank you very much, Chris. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, thanks for all the loyalty and the love through the years. Charlie Kendall's Metal Shop has a new home on the internet. 
It's ckmetalshop.com. The latest metal news. Metal Shop Showtimes with links, plus t-shirts and merch, along with all the metal that matters. Check it out, ckmetalshop.com.